Welcome to Finances Do Matter. My name is Richard and this is a first part in a mini-series on short selling. What is short selling? Well, let's go ahead and find out. Now, before we talk about short selling, just a reminder that in the last few days I've produced a video highlighting six Motley Fool share tips. I've placed a link to each of those in the description box below. Now, short selling, what is it? Why am I talking about it? Well, first and foremost, I was asked by one or two, in fact, subscribers to cover this issue. Now, rather than cover it all in one long video, which can prove to be quite complex, I thought the best way to treat this is to run a small number of short videos, starting with the basics and each video becoming a little more complicated as we go on. Then, if you're new to this sort of environment, you can make a decision relatively quickly if this is something you want to watch. And if you're quite experienced, then obviously the early parts you'll be more than familiar with. And then, unfortunately, you'll have to wait a little while until the latter parts come in. But trust me, I'll cover this in depth over probably, it'll range somewhere between three and five videos. So first and foremost, what is short selling? Let me say from the start, it is an advanced trading strategy that you should only consider adopting once you're relatively experienced in investing in the markets. It's either an investment strategy or a trading strategy. And the most simple way of explaining this is to say, if it's an investment strategy, then it's either long-term or it's something called hedging. In other words, it's protecting you against something from occurring. And if it's a trading strategy, it's one in which you plan to make quite a big profit in a relatively short period of time. But both of them are speculating in the decline or drop of a share price. Let me say that again. They are based on speculating that a share price will fall or decline. And that's why it's called short selling. Short because you're actually selling the stock today without technically owning it and then buying it back in the future because you actually believe that that stock is going to go down in value. So you sell it today, you buy it later. Okay, let's talk first and foremost about the trader or speculator. This person is essentially, I'll use the word gambling, but they will argue that it's very well studied, very well researched, therefore it's not a gamble, but it is a gamble. What happens? A trader will borrow stock or an asset. It doesn't have to be equities, but we'll talk about equities. They borrow equities today and sell them in the marketplace at the open market price. The reason they have done that is because they believe that the price will fall. And within a certain time period that's often laid out in advance, they will then repurchase those equities because they didn't really own them in the first place. They've borrowed them from somewhere and then basically they have to buy them in order to return them because they've sold them at the market price. Now, what's the risk? Well, if the price goes down, they make one heck of a lot of money and the further down it goes, the more money they make. But if the price goes up, then they lose money and the higher the price goes, the more they lose. And technically, the amount of losses could be infinite. Well, they're never quite infinite because obviously it will stop at a price somewhere, but it could be enormous. So let's say you purchase a share price for $1, thinking that it's going to go down to, shall we say, 50 cents. But instead of going down to 50 cents, it goes up to $10. Well, what you received for $1, you now have to buy back 
at ten dollars. The theory is it works the other way. What you sell at one dollar, you buy back at fifty cents. That's speculating. That's what traders tend to do. And this is where they believe that through their research and market, shall we say, market awareness, they can make money. And this tends to happen very often when there are announcements due to be made and the traders are pitching their bets on which direction that announcement is going to affect the market price. Now, before I go on to investment, I just want to make something clear because I'm bound to be asked this question. You may say, well, where does that trader borrow the shares or equities from? Well, they tend to borrow it from a broker dealer. Now, they have to own the shares in order to sell them. You cannot sell shares you do not own. So on that basis, they've borrowed the shares, sold them at the market price, and then go back into the market and purchase them again. Of course, there will be a charge levied by the broker dealer to the trader, and that charge could be commission or interest, depending how long those shares have been borrowed for and how many shares they've borrowed in the first place. Now, the second purpose for short selling is something called hedging or protection. This is where you protect your portfolio that you currently have against falls in the underlying share price. So you may invest in a range of shares or equities and you may for the long term wish to continue with that investment and not necessarily work out which shares to, to sell and which ones then to buy again if you feel that those prices could potentially fall. I think I mentioned at the start of this video that sometimes people short sell because they believe there's going to be an announcement that could adversely affect the share price. So what a, a, an investment manager tends to do is to say, well, there are a number of shares in my portfolio that could be hit badly, A, because it might be in a sector that could be adversely affected, or secondly, it might be a range of shares or equities who, through our research, we have found could be underperforming and the market could penalize. So in that case, you short sell a range of equities within that portfolio. You're still holding technically onto the original investments, but then you're borrowing again additional stock so that if the market does go down, then of course you've made a profit on what you've borrowed, for the want of a better term, and you've made a loss, obviously, on the ones that you're already holding, but you've created a degree of protection. Equally, if the prices go up, then the contract that you've taken, the short selling contract, you will lose money on, but on your underlying investments, you will have gained. Now, there are costs associated with that. Obviously, you've got to pay the expenses associated with the short sales and any interest that may be required of you. But if your portfolio is large and diverse enough, then those costs are often well worthwhile. But as I've already mentioned, it's imperative, crucial in fact, that as a newcomer to the world of investment, you leave well alone. So to conclude this video, what are the pros of short selling? Well, you've got the possibility of high profits. You have little capital required. You have leveraged your investments because you're technically borrowing to then sell and then to buy back, and you hedge against other holdings. The downside, one, potentially unlimited losses, because if it goes against you and the markets go up, they could in theory go to infinity. Two, a margin, what they call a margin account is necessary, and I'll deal with that in a later program. Three, margin interest is incurred, so you're paying for this borrowing, and you have something called short squeezes, which I won't cover now, but I will cover in a later video. As I've said, short selling is an advanced technique. 
should not be entered into lightly. I hope you've understood or I've managed to explain it so you can understand in principle how it works. And I look forward to welcoming you to our second video in this area. Meanwhile, I'd appreciate it if you'd give us a thumbs up, subscribe and press the bell sign, and I'll see you soon.